We are reviewing more declined logos today. My name is André Leroux. Let's begin. First logo today, uh, Yeti logo. Uh, two things that you have to work on here. The first is the mouth or the mustache. I don't know which. Um, it's hard to see. Is that a lip or a mustache? I thought mustache uh, because this pointed chin looks like a beard. Uh, but then if this is a mustache, the mouth here is quite far from the nose. Maybe this is just the lower lip and the mustache is actually the upper lip. Anyway, that needs to be clarified. The second thing is the forehead or the absence of a forehead. Um, we tend to think that the nose goes in the center with the eyes above and the mouth below. And that's wrong. Uh, the eyes go in the center. It sounds weird, but I promise they do. Have a look here. The distance from the top of the head to the eyes is about the same as the distance from the eyes to the chin. So in this logo, the anatomy of the face would be much more convincing if you move the eyes down to where they should be. Next, a dog logo with a magic theme. I like it very much. Good logo. Um, a little untidy, and I think the typography needs work. If we isolate this bit here, the text background, and we highlight the top edge of that, you can see the problem. That's just not nice to look at, a bit messy. Uh, I would just make that a straight line. And the placement is not optimal. Um, if you look down here, the circle extends just below the tagline box. So you end up with a straight line that has a little dip in it. Either make it a big dip, so it looks intentional or make it a straight line. Next, a logo that we cannot possibly approve on logo ground. Uh, this is very generic to the point of being cliche. There are thousands of logos that use this type of swoosh people. Best to just avoid it completely. For more logo cliches to avoid, check out this video. Next up, a skull logo. Uh, it could work except the gradient on the hood isn't great. You're using a linear gradient, so you get things like this dark red line here, which doesn't correspond to the shape of the object. A radial gradient would be a better option here. You also need uniformity in the shading. You're using a gradient in the hood, but a flat cast shadow in the skull. This makes the two parts feel disconnected, like parts from different logos. Pick one shading technique and use it consistently throughout the design. And just a thought, what about some melting here to echo the melting of the hood? Next, an eagle outline with a landscape inside. This is a weird one. Um, it is plagiarism. We found this and if we take these palm trees and overlay them here, they are identical. Uh, it's weird because this designer put some time and effort into making this eagle and modifying the background to work inside the eagle. This is someone who can design, but chooses to steal. Baffling. And banned from logo ground. Bye bye copycat. Next, a camera logo. Well, not really a logo though, if we're honest. Uh, for it to become a logo, it has to be distinctive but you have a very standard film strip combined with a very standard lens. It is possible to combine two generic things to make an interesting new thing, but this isn't interesting. It's unfortunately a case of generic plus generic equals generic. Next up, a ship's wheel with bowling pins and a bowling ball. Same problem here as with the previous one. The idea here is better, it's promising, but the execution is boring. Uh, the pins and the ball are so standard that they seem lifeless. You need to have more fun with it. Next, uh, an elephant yin yang lamp logo. You are trying to do too much in one logo. If you combine two things like uh, yin yang and uh, light bulb, that's already a challenge and one that you've not solved. Adding an elephant in there as well is just adding another problem. So I would leave the elephant out of it and find a good way to make a yin yang light bulb. Just be aware that the idea isn't new. So remember to check for similar logos before uploading to logo ground. 
And next we have a four-tailed fox. Not bad. What bugs me is the stance of this fox. If we connect the shoulder to the paw and the hip to the paw, you can see that he is leaning backwards, like he is retreating from something. That's too negative for a logo. In a logo, you want a positive, forward-leaning confidence. Uh, the company mascot has to look like the powerful king of his domain, not nervous or scared. Next up, a uh, bird logo. Nicely done. There's a lot to like here. The part that doesn't work is this section in the center. I'm not sure what it is. Um, I'm guessing wing because of its location, but there's nothing wing-like in the shape. I also thought maybe this is supposed to be a letter S, but nothing in the keywords or description indicates that. So that needs to be clarified. While we have the keywords and the description here, uh, you have irrelevant keywords in there. This isn't really an illustration. There's no black. Um, it's not abstract. It's not a silhouette. And I don't see the relevance of the word background. Let's talk about abstract. It does not mean non-realistic. It means non-figurative. I'll explain. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, abstract is a painting that uses shapes, lines, and color in a way that does not try to represent the appearance of people or things. And we can add animals to that. Not sure why they limit it to painting. Obviously, it applies to all art and to design as well. So, not depicting recognizable things. Okay, well, this logo has a bird in it. We recognize a thing from the visible world here, a bird, so it's not abstract. These really are abstract. They don't correspond to real-world things. A bird isn't abstract. And that's it for today. More logos next time. Remember to subscribe and thanks for watching.